But I, I wouldn't want to eat that over and over again. There's nothing. Coffee. I could live on coffee. Hello, everyone. Welcome back for another edition of Collider Ladies Night. I have Kate Morrow with me this time, and we're here for her brand new show, A Teacher, but it's Ladies Night. We talk about a little bit of everything, and you have so many incredible titles that I can't wait to hit. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. You can guarantee that Megan Levy is on the list today because I avoided watching that because I'm super sensitive about anything that has an animal in it. And I was in a puddle of very well-earned tears last night. Oh, sweet. Well, thanks for watching it. I mean, it is a a really beautiful, you know, true story. Yeah, I I was kind of kicking myself for not getting to it sooner, but I'm glad I did now so we could talk about it in a little bit. But we really go back to the beginning on this show. And in doing my research, I read an interview where you had mentioned that you were painfully shy as a kid. And that's not the first time I've heard that on this show from actors. So what do you think it is about shyness that at that age that doesn't necessarily hold someone back from putting themselves out there and getting on stage? Well, I think it's the shy. I think the fact that I was shy, um, it made sense that I sort of turned to acting because you're, you know, escaping and sort of hiding really behind other people's personas and characters. So to me, it felt when I was younger, much more comfortable, you know, pretending to be somebody else. Um, I felt much more confident when I was on stage or behind a camera or in front of a camera. Um, so I think, you know, now that I look back on it, it, it does make sense to me. I've, I've grown out of that because I was sort of forced to um, with, our, with the job that I have um, and doing it for such a long time. But yeah, when I was nine, it was like my parents, when I would tell them I wanted to be an actor, they, they were like, well, that's really cute, but like you can barely say hello to people. <laughs> So they, I think that they, they were surprised when I was actually able to sort of get on a stage and, and do anything other than hide behind somebody. <laughs> so it's one thing to have that feeling as a kid that you want to be an actor. It's another, I guess, to have yourself believe that you could do it, but maybe also in this situation, your parents. So do you remember the point that they saw you do something that made them think, huh, like, I think she can actually do it? Um. That's a good question. I think my mom would tell you that it was um, one of my first auditions. You know, she would drive, we were living in Bedford, New York, which is about an hour outside of the city. And so she would drive me into the city uh, quite often after school um, for auditions. And I was auditioning for um, this TV show, Homicide Life on the Streets. Do you remember that show? I do not remember that one. (laughs) Well, to live in New York at the time, it was like, it was kind of like law and order. Like everyone was on that show. Um, But that was my very, one of my very first auditions. I don't remember what I had to do, but you know, I remember my mom kind of was waiting in the waiting room for me and she wasn't in the room with me for the audition. But when I came out, I looked very upset and I had, I, I was still sort of crying and she was like, are you okay? And I was like, well, yeah, but I was just playing, you know, I don't know, a child whose mother was murdered or something. And she was like, oh my God, you could cry on command. This is great. You must be able to act. So that was her sort of first um, realization that I might be able to do it. (laughs) So next step of the process in a sense, and I know everybody's path is different. Some folks like to study more in school. Some like to just jump into it and get experience. And I know you deferred from Tish. So what was it like making that decision? Was there any wavering or did you feel certain that you were choosing the best path for yourself? Uh, no, that was pure manipulation on my part. I knew I didn't want to go to, to college I had been acting, like I started professionally acting when I was 14. Um, And I was really not, I was really dyslexic. Um, So for me, school was always pretty challenging. And I mean, by the time I got to high school, I, my dyslexia had gotten a lot better. Um, But I was so determined to get out of high school and start acting full time. Um, But I knew my parents were going to insist on me going to college. So I, what I did was I decided 
to go and talk to like my school guidance counselor or something and ask them, you know, how can I graduate early so that I can like get to college early and then get out early. Like, I just wanted to get on with my life. (laughs) So, um, you know, I think I was 16 or something and my, uh, guidance counselor just said, you know, you just have to take a couple extra classes and then you can do it. And so I, I went to my parents with this idea of graduating a year early and they were kind of like, whoa, (laughs) you know, they didn't, They knew how serious I was, but I think they were surprised at the motivation there. Um, And so I did it. I graduated, you know, just a year early from high school. I auditioned for Tish because I knew that my parents were going to be insistent on me going. But I also thought to myself, well, if I could get out of high school and then get a job, then maybe I'll be able to just tell my parents, well, look, I'm, I'm making enough money to like live on my own and just work as an actor. Let, let me defer a year. So that's what I did. I, I auditioned for Tish for the um, Cap 21, the musical theater program, because I was really yes. obsessed with uh, Broadway and that's really what I wanted. That was my dream. So I, well, I got into Cap 21, but then I just kept deferring until, you know, until my parents kind of went, okay, now we see what you're doing here. <laughs> you're never going to school. When did the dream shift from Broadway to on-screen work? Um, well, it's still one of my dreams to be on Broadway. I would love it so much. Um, but I think the second I, the second I did my first movie, I realized that it doesn't matter where you're acting, you know, whether it's on stage or in front of a camera, it was, I just knew it was for me. So it never really went away. I just, you know, when, once I moved to Los Angeles at 19, I was just physically far away from it. So, you know, it kind of shifted then. Speaking of the first films, I don't know if this was the first or one of the first, but Random Hearts. I know you were still fairly young at the time. So did it register to you that you were on the set of a Sidney Pollock film playing Kristen Scott Thomas's daughter? Was there kind of, you know, a nerve factor in there? Yeah, I mean, yes and no. I was definitely nervous. I knew who Kristen Scott Thomas was um, and I was already a fan of hers and of Harrison Ford's. I wasn't so aware, I was only 14. So I wasn't so aware of directors at that point. But, you know, my parents sort of educated me on who he was and how brilliant he was. And then I had, you know, such an amazing time working with him. I think what really made me realize how real it was, I guess, was because I was out of school. I had, you know, I had a tutor on on set, which, again, that was also one of my dreams was to just be homeschooled so I could again, just be an actor and like not have to deal with all the extra stuff that goes on in the school. Um, So to me, whenever I was on set and I was learning that way, I always thrived. That was sort of my best version of learning. Um, But, you know, Sidney Pollack was an absolute dream to work with, just the sweetest thing on the planet. Is there anything about having that experience with those people on that set as one of your big first features that now makes you look back and think, I am so glad that I had that time with those people? Yeah, I mean, he is such a legend and I only learned more and more about what a legend he was, you know, the older I got, you know. Um, But yeah, I mean, it was such a special thing to experience at such a young age. but I do think I was less nervous then probably than I would be, you know, as I was when I got older, you know. It's very reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> a little more broadly, you amass a whole bunch of credits very, very quickly. And I know job security in this industry is kind of like a near impossible concept. But do you remember the gig you booked or maybe when you saw the finished product that you worked on that made you get a sense of, I guess, confidence and a bit of stability? Like I'm doing this, I'm here and I'm Mm -hmm. going forward with some momentum. Well, I think because I started so young and as a kid, when I was doing it, it was just obviously it was a hobby because, you know, I I wasn't doing it because I needed to make money as a 14 year old. I was doing it because it's what I loved. And then I would say, yeah, as I got older and when I was trying to get out of going to college, um, that's when I really needed to 
work to show my parents that I was going to be able to make a living doing this without being educated for it. So I don't know. I mean, and I didn't, I, at that point I was, I was 17 turning 18 and I, you know, was just doing like independent films um, that were sort of just sort of getting me by, but I never, I was so uh, blissfully unaware of um, sort of how challenging it can be. And um, I think because I was young and I didn't have the pressure of like, you have to not live at home and you've got to do this on your own. I was still in New York and I, um, and I was living at home at that point. I didn't feel the pressure of having to work nonstop. Um, but yeah, I think that the, the, the sort of like blissful unawareness of um, just sort of doing it, I was doing it because I loved it. And then, um, and I always had this confidence as a child that it didn't matter how long it took, I was gonna do it. Like there was no doubt in my mind. And I think a lot of that has to do with my parents because they were, they just were very supportive of it and of my, um, tenacity and, um, ambition. Um, so yeah, I think as you get old, as I got older is when I sort of, that's when I, you, that's when I had more doubts about like, oh God, am I ever going to work again? I mean, I still have that fear sometimes, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't think that ever goes away, especially when you're super passionate about what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of that though, I, I always do think it's very valuable to talk about those bumps in the road and how you overcame them. So when that kind of blissful ignorance went away, do you remember the first point that kind of, I don't know, like hit you like a truck in a sense where you're like, oh, like, oh my God, like, I don't know if I'm going to get past whatever it is, uh, not booking an audition, not having a film pan out the way you hoped anything at all. Yeah. I mean, like, cause I moved to Los Angeles when I was 19 and I moved out on my own and I didn't really, I knew no one, um, but I was doing it because I, and I didn't want to leave New York. I mean, I, I'm from New York. I love it there. I, I was don't living in, Yeah, I was living in the city. I was living in New York City at the time. Um, but I thought, well, this is going to help me. This is going to help my career. So I got to get out there. And I did. And, you know, I did like my first pilot season, which was really intimidating and a lot of pressure, but I was very close to booking that <laughs> that old TV show Lost, which was very exciting because, um, you know, basically it was like, it was the whole cast that you see on the show and me. <laughs> and I'm the only, I think I'm the only one that didn't get a part in it. And at the time I was really bummed. Um, but what I learned was like about a week later, I auditioned for Brokeback Mountain. And while my role in Brokeback Mountain is very small, um, I wouldn't have been able to do that or even audition for it if I had booked Lost. So I do think that like that taught me that a lot of the times if you're not booking something, it's because either you're going to learn something somewhere else or there's another job out there that just wouldn't be happening if, you know, if you booked this one. And, you know, Brokeback will forever be one of my favorite movies of all time and one of the most special things I'll ever be a part of, I think. This is exactly why I asked that question. <laughs> so another kind of uh, broad career question here. Do you remember a specific project that maybe gave you the most clarity as far as what you want to accomplish with your career or the path that you were hoping that it goes down? Um. I don't know. I don't really think I have. I mean, I think the older that I get and now that I'm a mom and a stepmom, I, I think that definitely goals shift. Um, you know, like to, to me now, my priorities are definitely different because I, as much as I love to work and I love it just as much now as I did when I was a kid, which again, like that to me, it feels so lucky. Um, but I don't want to leave my family for it's harder and harder to leave my family. Um, and I don't want to leave my kids for as long or at all. And so there's so many other factors in it now. And, um, and knowing that they're going to be able to, you know, one day when they're older, see the choices that I made, you know, before I was their mom and then after it does feel like more pressure and I think it should be so 
I do think now um, I have, there's much more weight on the decisions that I make, you know? Absolutely. Can 100% understand that and respect it. Jumping back into some specifics here. You know, I have to ask you about Iron Man 2. So (laughs) nowadays we look at any sized role in a Marvel movie and think that it can be a game changer for someone. But back when the MCU was first in its infancy infancy with a movie like Iron Man 2, what were your expectations going into a movie like that with that sized role? Did you have hopes that it would pave the way to a larger role in the franchise? Did you have any understanding of what this franchise could possibly become? Uh, I remember I like had the me- I had a meeting with John Favreau for that. And they had said to me, like, it's a very, very small part, but it's with Robert Downey and John and like, it'll be really fun. And a lot of times they bring these characters back into bigger, more substantial roles. That was sort of, it wasn't a promise, but it was a, it was definitely uh, something that was hinted at to me. So that's the reason why I even took the meeting was because I, because I thought, well, if there's a chance of it, then like, why not spend an evening working with Robert Downey Jr. and John Favreau? Like, great. I love them both. They're amazing. It'll be, it'll be a good experience. And, you know, that's exactly what it ended up being. It ended up being nothing more than that, <laughs> but it really was fun. And we were shooting till like four in the morning and, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a weird, I guess, uh, cameo that turned into really nothing, <laughs> but I don't mind, you know, it's a cameo that really did make an impression though. I mean, it's, it's a good sequence. And I feel like this is because we're steeped in Marvel content all the time, but I've seen a lot of lists where it's, it's something along the lines of, I feel like wasted is the wrong word, but like an actor who was wasted in a Marvel oh, movie, if I've you know what I mean, lists. where it's like, yeah. <laughs> like they should have made more of you being part of that movie. But I still think it's a nice, a nice yeah, scene. And it, was, it, really was, it really was fun. And like Robert Downey is, so, he was just improving the whole time. So it was just a, it was fun to be able to work with, with him for sure. Um, so I don't, I don't regret it, but it is fun, funny. I'm like, what was I doing? What was I doing in that? <laughs> Jumping over to the Martian now. Let's get specific with this one. Maybe the opening action sequence. What is it like for you filming that on set? Can you feel the chaos of a moment like that? Or is it more a result of, you know, post-production and movie magic where it still feels fairly calm on your end? No, I mean, Ridley Scott is a master and the costumes were so incredible and took so long to get on and off that, you know, and we, when you have the helmet on, you, you can only hear your fellow astronauts. Um, so it felt so real, so dark on the set. Um, we were sort of tied to these ropes that when the wind machines would go, they would kind of pull us to make us, um, you know, unsteady. Uh, I had a really hard time even stay, stay, staying standing up because I'm so petite. So because the wind was the wind machines were so massive, um, but it was so magical um, and so realistic. You could, we could barely hear each other screaming. So like all all of the dialogue and everything, it really was. It did feel incredibly real, um, and. I just remember that <laughs> movie was so funny because like to get our co- to be able to go to the bathroom was a whole you would need at least 30 minutes to just get the costume on and off. So we would all sort of like per- we would all sort of tell each other like, OK, you know, in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to have to go. So why don't we all sort of plan to go at the same time? So we're not all waiting for one person. But it was, yeah, it was funny and very bonding between all of us. I feel like in some weird worlds, you know, figuring out when best for a whole company to take a bathroom break <laughs> might be more efficient on the set. <laughs> pretty, it's a pretty good idea. <laughs> Actually, never mind. That probably shouldn't be a thing. What about when you get onto the the Hermes set? Because we know the the structure of what we see in the final film is incredibly unique with the rotation. Is that something that you are able to feel and play with while you're standing on a set that isn't exactly that? Yeah, I mean, it. 
it's so realistic when you're there because he, you know, Ridley just gets the best people. Arthur Max did such an incredible, incredible job with it. Um, it does feel so realistic again. And then being able to do the, you know, the wire work and everything was, um, you know, something that I will never forget. Also then when we're taking off and we're all sitting there and the thing is shaking, I get very, very motion sickness. I thought I was going to vomit in the thing. <laughs> so again, I, and I just kept imagining, well, this is probably like not even a fraction of what it actually feels like. Um, so it did, it really did help with being able to just feel like you were there and, you know, it made the acting just that much easier because everything feels so, so realistic. Did they ask if you wanted to try, like, what is it, a, a, like a vomit comet or a gyrosphere um, to prep for that? Um, I don't think they did because I think I, if I recall, I was on another movie right before it. So I just... I, I was doing this movie with Shia LaBeouf and I wrapped that and went like straight to Budapest. So I don't think I had the time to do it, but I'm sure they would have offered it. And I probably would have had to say no, cause I mean, I can't even sit in a car really for very long um, unless I'm driving without, without having to vomit. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that's that's extreme just because I'm curious now, have you ever wanted to try anything? Like, I don't know if this is even related, but like, skydiving or bungee jumping oh, or, no. or an extreme sport like that no thank you never 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 I'm not yeah I'm not into it <laughs> uh, good thing you can experience some of this stuff through movie magic and you don't actually have to do it yourself. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> so Megan Levy now first I'm curious what is something that you accomplished while making that movie that you can specifically connect to already having a friendship with Gabriella beforehand well, she and I, yeah, I mean, Gabrielle and I were, we have a lot of the same passion, not just in, in, in movies, but also in animal activism. It's why she and I ended up making this movie together. We connected on Twitter, which I only just remembered the other day. The only reason I ever met Gabriella was because I had seen Blackfish and I tweet, I think I DM'd or tweeted at her and her producing partner saying like, if there's anything I can do to help support the movie or the cause, like, please let me know. And then, and they did, they reached out to me and we worked together on some stuff. Um, and then we worked together, me and Gabriella on some humane society stuff. And we just realized how much we respected each other and how much we really wanted to work together. And then when Megan Levy came my way, and they were looking for a director, I suggested her because uh, I just felt like she would get it and it would be a great opportunity for us to work together. And it really was because she, she and I have um, a way of communicating that is just, sometimes she just really wouldn't have to say anything. She would just sort of come over to me and you know, either put her hand on my shoulder or she would start to say something and I would finish her sentence. It was just like a real, we had a real connection. Um, and, you know, the story is so beautiful and it was very challenging to make. Um, but like one of the more rewarding things I've ever done, the training itself was so incredible. You know, I got to train with a dog, basically trained him to be, a, <laughs> you know, a Marine as I was also being trained uh, to be a Marine. And it was again, so bonding and to work with animals is um, unlike any other experience. Uh, yeah, and, and we, we shot in Spain and it was just like this really intense emotional experience. And um, Gabriella and I to this day are very, very good friends and still are looking for something else to do together. Um, but that, but her movie Blackfish really opened up my eyes to my passion for animal activism. And it's way more intense now. And I'm way more active now than I was before I had seen that movie. So I, I definitely credit her and that to, you know, one of the great passions of my life. I, I very much like scrolling through your Instagram for that reason and how vocal you are about all that. And if the two of you coming together means another project that taps into that in a respect. I am very much all for it. Oh, well, thank you. Just because I love talking about this. I, 
I got in the habit for for a while of asking on ladies night, you know, who is a filmmaker, who is a female filmmaker in the industry who you think is making a difference for the better. And a lot lately, I've been hearing about what you kind of just described on that project where you have the ability to bring in another voice that you had previously connected with. I just had that conversation with uh, Marsha Stephanie Blake about how Rachel Brosnahan got her involved in their latest movie together. So is that an opportunity you get often? And has anyone ever done that for you? Yeah, I think it's it's definitely becoming something more frequent now because I'm pro um, producing more things. So I have more of a, I have more control over who I'm gonna work with um, when I get involved with things super early. So, so yeah, it's definitely something that um, also that I'm seeking out more often as that, you know, I'd rather work with people that, um, you know, have multiple layers to them. I mean, it's, it's one thing to be offered an amazing movie with a director that you have never worked with before or that has never done anything before. And you have to take that like leap of faith, which is always very scary. Um, but when you're starting from the ground up and you're having to like choose the director and all of those things, there is, um, it's just a whole other element of um, creative control and, and um, all that. I don't know that it's ever, I don't know that it's ever happened to me um, possibly, but I just, I've auditioned, I mean, because I've been acting for so long and like most of the things I've gotten have been because I auditioned for them, you know, it's usually come through that way, I would say. Um, but possibly. And like maybe it happened and you just don't know about yeah, it. Yeah, and I have no idea. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I'll toss that other question to you now. Who is uh, someone out there in the industry that you think is changing it for the better? Oh, God. I mean, there's so many people. Um, <laughs> I know. You know, David Ayelowo is um, one of my really, really good friends who I've known forever. Him and his wife and his family, they're family to me. Um, he and I have worked together a couple of times. I just think we need more people like him. He is one of the best people that I know as, as a human being. Um, but he's also incredibly talented and I'm very excited to see what his directorial debut feature is going to be like. I haven't seen it yet, but, um, but I love him so much and, um, and I think he has the greatest heart and he says what he believes. And um, I just think he is gonna make an even bigger impact than he already has. I just love him. So I did wanna ask you about Fantastic Four because I read what you said with the Emmys and I don't wanna pry or ask for details, but more generally, because I think other people hearing about challenges and how you overcame them can be yeah. very helpful. So. Walking away from an experience like that, what would you say is maybe an actionable idea or a value you picked up from going through that that you are now bringing to the sets that you're on to make sure everybody around you has an experience for the better? Um, well, I, I think that the thing that I always go back to on that one is that I should have, um, I think I should have listened to my instincts, followed my instincts more, you know, like when my gut was telling me like, you probably shouldn't let that slide what that person just said. Or, you know, if you're feeling a certain way about how, um, what an energy is like and how that is affecting your performance, you're being paid to do a certain thing. And if something is in the way of that, you know, you have the right to speak up and say, I'm actually not able to do what I am here to do because of X, Y, and Z. And, you know, I think that speaking up is something that I really, I think that we all um, probably learn it over and over again to, to follow your instincts. And if you're feeling a certain thing that is uneasy or whatever, there's a reason for it. Um, but because it was such a big movie and it was like, you know, again, when you're in, a, usually, <laughs> except in this case, when you're in a, a big superhero movie, they usually do incredibly well, like almost always. So, you know, even if it's challenging or this or that, or, you know, not everything's perfect, like it's probably good for you to do it. That was sort of what I was being told and also was telling myself, you know, 
and I, I don't regret doing it at all, but I do regret not having, um, you know, stood up for myself. I, I, I regret that for sure, because if my daughter ended up acting and, and was, you know, was in a situation like that where she felt like she couldn't speak up Meanwhile, I'm a, I'm a pretty tough person and I do, I really do advocate for myself. Um, granted this was a few years ago and maybe this situation was different, but if, if I was in that situation today, it just wouldn't have, it wouldn't have happened or it just would have been a different environment, I think. Um, so again, like good learning experience, you know? Absolutely. And I appreciate you sharing that because I really am a big believer that someone out there might might have need to have heard that from an actor they admire like you and it could make all the difference. I also think asking people, this is another great, great lesson that I learned, asking other actors or, and I learned this lesson, not just on this movie, but on a couple other after that, asking other actors what their experience was like working with either a producer or a director or another actor. Um, I never used to do that. And now I do because I think that if you really respect another actor and they've worked with someone that you're thinking about working with or whatever, then you can learn a lot just by talking to them. Um, and I'm, I always say like, if anyone ever wants to ask me about my experiences, um, on things, then please do. Because I, you know, I think that it's not always, if you're in a position where you can make a choice about doing something or not doing something, um, and we're not always, sometimes you just have to work. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you're in a position where you can doing the research, not just with the role, but with the people that you're about to work with creatively is really important. Okay, to follow up before I jump into a teacher, in that case, who is someone you've worked with, whether it's a co-star or a director that you want to sing their praises to somebody else that maybe doesn't get the notoriety you think that they deserve? Oh, that's such a good question. <laughs> um, and I wish I had more time to like really think about it because there's so Put many. Put on the spot you know? a little. I know uh, there really are there. I've, I've, I've been really lucky. Like I've worked with so many people that I love so much. I already mentioned David Oyelowo. Um, but you know, like I, I know he gets kind of a crazy rap. Well, first of all, my husband, but I know that's, a, that's like, how are you going to talk about him? But he's <laughs> just like one of the best actors, I think. And I know for a fact, cause I live with him definitely one of the most dedicated, which also is why I want to bring up this other person because he is also as dedicated to Shushaya LaBeouf when I worked with him. And I know there's lots of people have a lot of, opinion, of opinions about him, but when I worked with him, I was just like so impressed by his passion and, um, you know, his dedication to it is really special. Um, so yeah, there you go. Solid choices right there. Mm -hmm. Actually, here's one selfish question before a teacher. I'm obsessed with American Horror Story. I know you've worked with Ryan Murphy multiple times. Yeah. But like, why not jump back into that show? I have, no one invited me. <laughs> Someone should. I don't know. I wasn't invited back, but like, I don't think people love my character very much on that show. I was, you know, I loved playing her. She, who doesn't want to play a sex crazed ghost? But like, I, you know, people, I'll, most people, hate me on that show which I take as a compliment you know that's what that show is it's about like a whole a whole <laughs> bunch of unique personalities and having straight extreme reactions to all of them so you did yeah. your job well there <laughs> thank you all right a teacher first off the opportunity comes your way was there any hesitation whatsoever about jumping into it no not at all um I just knew I wanted to play the part I I met with Hannah Fidel. She, she and Michael Costigan, who Michael Costigan and I had worked together on Brokeback Mountain all those years ago. Um, so they approached me about doing about the idea of producing and starring in it. And I, I had already seen the movie version, and then I'd also seen Hannah's other work. So I just I knew that I that I wanted to see it as a viewer. I wanted to see, um, you know, 
more of that story and I wanted to see it in a different way. And being a part of it as a producer was even more appealing to me because I knew I'd get to be creatively involved um, from the ground up. And uh, yeah, it never, it never, I was never quite, I never questioned it. Uh, you know, challenging roles are much more interesting to play than, than others. You had produced before though, right? I had only produced one other thing. I had produced a, um, a film called My Days of Mercy with yes. my good friend, Ellen Page, yeah. And jumping into a series in a producerial capacity, was there anything about that that surprised you? Any, uh, you know, new thing you were able to do that really excited you? Well, I'd never produced a ser series before, so it was definitely a learning experience. I was excited about that. And I was, um, yeah, I was excited to, to, you know, be a part of it in, in that way to really learn about how that all works. And, you know, literally from like the pitch in the room to FX and everybody else. And um, yeah, the whole, the whole thing was, was new to me, really. What is a seemingly little thing about being a producer that you didn't realize a producer was responsible for that kind of blew you away? Um, I, gosh, I don't know. I mean, I think I always assumed that producers kind of, I mean, and they, they do, their jobs ex are very, very expansive. You know, you're not just talking about like where you're shooting the show and how much money it's going to cost um to get a certain amount of extras each day and like casting and all of all of the there's so many elements to it um I, I think I always sort of knew that just from being an actor um but you know I I still have no idea what I'm doing in a lot of ways there which is okay <laughs> like I you know I'm I understand how casting works and like you know the daily of it all what the amount of dailies we get I guess that was surprising you know the amount of dailies you get and have to watch and the amount of times you have to watch every episode um that is a little bit like mind-blowing I think <laughs> shifting to the character now what is it like playing someone with feelings that might be relatable or reasonable who just makes terrible decisions because you have to play this character you have to be in her headspace but is it frustrating for you at all just I don't know, I guess living in that headspace with the decisions that she makes. It's not complicated for me. Like as an actor, I find it, um, I find it pretty easy to sort of get into character and then get out. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I was excited about the fact that we wanted to make Claire seem relatable in a lot of ways up until the point that she makes this horrible choice. Um, but we want, I, I was excited about finding all of the things that I could relate to with her in order to then, you know, have this big shift in moral judgment. And, um, you know, because I think you do, you need it. You need to be able to um, find things that you can relate to with the character in some way, um, you know? And I think that there are a lot of things about her, um, even just before it happens, I think that being in her early thirties and um, feeling a, lot, a little lost and like, okay, I don't have kids. Everyone seems to be having kids. Is that something that I want? Um, should I be doing that, that with, with this person? Do I like, my, do I, I love my job, but am I satisfied where I am? All of these things that I think a lot of people relate to in some way at some point in their life. Um, yeah, so I, I, I like that. I think that, and I like the challenging part about her is even more intriguing to me to be able to play. I'm gonna try to ask this question without being a big ball of awkwardness right now, but <laughs> I wanted to ask you about shooting sex scenes. So a lot of times in these interviews, I ask uh, what is something when you were first starting out that you were embarrassed to ask? And I'll never forget that Daniel Kaluuya told me that he was afraid to ask about what it actually takes to shoot a sex scene. So one, what is a piece of advice you would give to a young actor first starting out who might be nervous to shoot that kind of scene, but then also, 
What is it about a teacher that made filming those scenes different given the nature of the material? Um, my advice to anyone who hasn't done it before, who hasn't had to do a sex scene before and then has to, is I think being honest about that is always super um, helpful. I've, I've had to do scenes with people before who, who had never you know, had to do an intimate scene. And when they told me that I was like, oh, okay. It made me feel more um, like um, connected and like they were my partner and we were gonna like, we were gonna figure this out so that it was as uh, less awkward as possible. And I think the way to make it as less awkward as possible is to know exactly what you're doing as in to talk about it with your director and to know exactly what the goal is of this scene. Um, a lot of times like the best, the best sex scenes are choreographed and you have no idea that they are. They seem like they were like somehow improv and meanwhile they're not. Um, and with our, with our show, it was all thoroughly discussed very specifically. And, you know, just like in a normal, as you would discuss any other scene that was important emotionally or, um, you know, important to the plot in any way. It was just, there were never any surprises. Um, and so that always made me feel very safe and very um, comfortable. <laughs> um, I also felt very comfortable in this because of our DP. She, um, she also was our uh, camera operator in a lot of scenes. I think in all of our sex scenes, she was our camera operator. So um, it really felt like, uh, you know, she was basically there over my shoulder or Nick's shoulder kind of like whispering like, um, can you put your arm down a little bit or like things like that. It just, you literally had somebody watching your back. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was as um, unawkward as it, as, it, as it can be. I feel like I've gone over with you, but if you have two more minutes, we always end ladies night with some random questions, like questions sure. that I just pull out okay. of thin air in the okay. moment. Let's go with what is the last movie or show you've watched? Um, the last movie I watched was a Tommy Lee Jones movie that he directed with Hillary Swank. What was that I called? Can't, I can't believe I can't. It's a Western. Yeah. Uh, my husband's shooting a Western here. So all we keep doing is watching Westerns. I can't There's remember no. the name of it. <laughs> Not, neither can I at the moment, but right now we're going to put a poster up of it. So okay, you guys will go. know what it is. <laughs> um, of everyone you've worked with, who were you the most starstruck to meet for the first time? Um, I, I don't really get starstruck. I never worked with Oprah, but I, I got starstruck by meeting her. I don't blame you. <laughs> if you could only eat one meal over and over and over for the rest of your life, what would it be? Um, like, a this is so boring, but like, a um, <laughs> Of, of, of this is, I actually don't even want to eat this over and over again. I was about, my stomach's growling and I'm like, I really want like a vegan rice bowl. Um, but I, I wouldn't want to eat that over and over again. There's nothing. Coffee. I could live on coffee. Yeah. I, mm. I can understand how you feel with that. Yeah. Do you have any pets? Yes. We have a, a 17 and a half year old dog called Lucius. Oh my. Yeah. Uh, let's end with my favorite one and it's a deep question, but you can keep it light or you can go the other route if you want. What is the biggest fear that you've had that you've actually managed to overcome? Um, uh, the biggest fear that I have, well, I guess uh, one of my fears and this is just movie related because that's, I guess, on my mind, but I have a, a pretty serious fear of um, heights and I've had to be in numerous helicopters in movies that I've done. Helicopters specifically with no doors on them. Um, Megan Levy is one of them and also Shooter, this other movie I did with Mark Wahlberg. And both times I was terrified. I was like, I'm for sure gonna cry. This is so embarrassing. And then I did it and it was fine, like really fine. Um, so I guess that's one. <laughs> I still cry when I go to the dentist. So I wish that <laughs> applied to me, but it doesn't just yet. 
All right. I have to let you go. But again, thank you. thank you so much for your time today. And for everybody out there, do check out A Teacher. It's going to be available on Hulu. You have access to three episodes right now, and then they're going to add a new one every single Tuesday until the show wraps up. Recommend checking it out. And Kate, thank you again for your time. Huge congratulations on the show and everything else you've accomplished. Thank you so much.